In this example, we've been asked to differentiate this function of x. I look at that function and I see straight away that it is a product. So I should be thinking about how to set up the product rule. And the second factor, the second part of the product, is an inverse trigonometric function. So I should be thinking about how to differentiate inverse trig functions. But let's set it up. So first of all, you let u equal the first function of x. This is inside the product rule. And we'll let v equal the second part, which is the arc cos of 3x. The product rule will require the derivative of each of those. So let's come across here, du dx. The derivative of x is just 1. And to find dv dx, this is where we'll need the four-step process of finding the derivative of inverse trig functions. Step 1, eliminate the inverse function. So arc cos 3x equaling v is an equivalent statement to saying that cos of v is equal to 3x. Remembering that I want to get dv dx out of this to put it together in my product rule. So if cos v is equal to 3x, step 2 of the process is to differentiate with respect to x. Let's write that down here. Differentiate with respect to x. Realizing that the left-hand side is a function of v. The right-hand side is a function of x. To differentiate a function of v with respect to x, we've got to use a quick implicit differentiation, or the chain rule. So we quickly differentiate with respect to v multiplied by dv dx. Let's write that down here. The derivative with respect to v of cos v multiplied by dv dx. Derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x is just 3. This first derivative, derivative of cos v with respect to v, derivative of cos is negative sine, negative sine v. dv dx, we don't know what that is at this stage, but that's what we want. We want that dv dx as part of our chain uh, product rule to put together with the du dx, etc. That's equal to 3. But that's all the derivatives done for now. So third step in the process was to rearrange the derivative to get dv dx by itself. So I simply just divide both sides by the minus sine v, and dv dx will equal negative 3 divided by sine v. So that's good. We've got an expression for dv dx. But we need this in terms of x. So v was given to us as a function of x. The derivative should be a function of x as well. The last step in the derivatives of inverse trig functions was to now work out what sine v is in terms of x. And I'm going to use the fact that I've got cos v equals 3x. So I've got cos v. I want sine v. I just use uh, the, an option of two methods, either an identity that connects cos v and sine v, or a triangle. Because we're dealing with trig functions here, I can put this into a triangle. So I know what cos v is, so I'll come down and put that into a triangle, any right angle triangle. It doesn't matter so long as it's a right angle. The angle for cos v, the angle is v, so I'll just label one of these angles as v. Remembering the definition of cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. 3x divided by 1. 3x must be the adjacent side. So we'll put that there as 3x. And the length of the hypotenuse must be 1. To work out sine v, I need the opposite over hypotenuse. So I need to know what this opposite side is. We'll use a quick little Pythagoras' theorem to work that out. I'll label this as a for now. And we know that a squared plus 3x all squared is equal to 1 squared, Pythagoras' theorem right there. Rearranging that for a, 3x all squared is 9x squared, becomes negative over the other side. To get a, we take the square root. Because we've taken a square root, we must include plus or minus. It doesn't really make sense to have a negative length 
for the side of a triangle, but we know that this is just representing a function, so we include the plus or minus for now, and we have to work out as part of the inverse trig function process whether we're trying to take the uh, positive or the negative square root for sine v here. Anyway, we should write that down. So using the triangle and the new value for A, sine V, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 9x squared, divided by the hypotenuse side, which is 1. And so that's all divided by 1. We can leave it like that. So we now need to decide whether we're taking the positive or the negative root. So we need to work out, is sine v a positive or a negative answer? We come back to look at the inverse trig function. We see here arc cos is right up uh, at the top of our question. And so we've taken the inverse of cos. When you take an inverse of function, the function has to be 1 to 1. So it's cos of v. For us to make cos v 1 to 1, we've had to restrict the domain. Now, v is our uh, variable that has the domain, so we've restricted v values. Let's draw a quick sketch of cos v. Quick set of axes here. Let's label the axes. We just need the horizontal axes, which is v. So cos of v, the restriction for cos is this, to make it 1 to 1. The standard restriction is for us to restrict v to go from 0 to pi. So they are the values we're dealing with. We haven't taken the inverse of the sine function, but we're taking sine of the same values. So we only need to consider sine v in between v values of 0 to pi. So now let's sketch sine v using the values with this restriction, the domain from 0 to pi. So over here, we can draw a quick graph of sine v from 0 to pi. It goes like that. The sine function, of course, would continue down here on either side of 0 and of pi. But because we've restricted the domain of v, we therefore only consider those values which have been restricted. Looking at that, we can see that the graph for sine v, where v is in between 0 and pi, is just above the, y, uh, the, the, the v axis. And so therefore, sine v must be positive, and so we can take the positive square root. We state that down here. Sine v must be greater. It could be equal to 0 if we're dealing with values right on the 0 or the pi. But we just say it's greater than or equal to 0 for now, and so therefore, take the positive. And so to sum up that little bit with the restriction of the domains, we say that sine v is equal to the positive square root of 1 minus 9x squared. We're working out sine v for us to substitute into our expression for dv dx so that the vdx is in terms of x, which we can then put together with the udx as part of our product rule. So we substitute our expression for sine v now into this form here, so dv dx. will equal negative 3 divided by the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. And so we have an expression for dv dx and v and u and u dx. So to differentiate our product right up the top, we can state the product rule and substitute all our values in. So dy dx, using our product rule now, and let's state the product rule, u dv dx plus v du dx. And we substitute in the values that we have. We saw that u was just equal to x. dv dx is negative 3 divided by the square root 1 minus 9x squared. v, going back up to the top, was our inverse trig function. v is arc cos of 3x. And du dx, the derivative of u, of course, it's just 1. We've got multiplied by 1 in here. We can simplify this final expression a little bit. 
Move the x inside the brackets, we get negative 3x, all divided by the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. 1 times the arc cos function is just arc cos of 3x. And there's our final answer. The derivative of x times arc cos of 3x is this expression here.